Yo, Moderate Cyclist here. Here we are again with another team time trial. This is the second team time trial of the season and I'm pretty eager to do a little bit better than I did in the previous one. We're on triple flat loop, which as the name suggests is fairly flat. Only 134 meters of elevation over the 33.9 kilometer course. Straight out of the gate, I'm starting in position five as opposed to position two. I think that this is a, a good change for me. It means that I'm not coming straight out of the gate uh, into an effort, getting that heart rate up early. It allows me to settle into a rhythm. We have a slightly different roster this time around. Um, seemingly everybody on the team is fairly experienced. I'm again, the newbie in this format. Our strategy remains the same. We're gonna be rolling one minute turns uh, with a target wattage of around about four and a half to five watts per kilo. Uh, for me, that equates to around about 350 watts. This is definitely my source of strife for the team time trial format. 350 watts is pretty high. My FTP is around about 330. Uh, towards the end of the year, it has been significantly lower, I think. So this is a really tough push straight from the gate. You can see I'm coming into my first turn. Uh, most notably, I can see that my heart rate is at about 180 and climbing. We're only four minutes into this time thigh trial and that's pretty high. If this heart rate is going to continue, I'm going to burn out pretty quick. Uh, but I'm pushing hard in this turn. I'm really eager to do a good first turn. I'm um, holding it up around 5 watts per kilo, which is a little bit higher than the 350 that we were saying before. Um, my strategy this time around, though, has been to really keep a close control of my wattage. I found last team trial, time trial I was probably pushing a little bit too hard in my turns. Um, being a little bit heavier than I think some of my teammates, it, it, it means that I'm putting the pressure on that turn. I probably don't need to be. I could keep it a little bit lower and uh, hold the speed quite comfortably. All in all, this was a pretty good turn. You can see from my image there, I'm, I'm fairly composed during this, keeping it pretty steady. My turn's about to finish now, letting me ease up on the power and hopefully get my heart rate down to a more manageable level before my next turn. Coming into my second turn now, despite the push to get onto the front of the line, this is a much more comfortable turn. I've really settled into a rhythm. I'm sticking to my plan of holding around 350 watts, just surging every now and then to make sure that I'm providing a lead out for the team that they need. It is a notably more laboured effort though. You can see I'm, I'm really having to focus and push as we get through this one. My heart rate is up pretty high, especially for so early. However, it's about 10 minutes into this, I'm sitting at 187. I gotta be careful not to push over 190 at this point, otherwise I'm gonna be in the red and struggling to kind of recover my heart rate from there. I'm watching these videos back, I've discovered a quirk about myself whereby I tilt my head to the left as I'm on a pretty heavy duress. You can see as I come to the end of this minute, uh, it's kind of, happening um, eager for a little bit of respite as I let Todd Ron roll through into his turn. Third turn now I think this clip here really shows maybe a gap in my time trial skill set. I find that as I roll into my turns I'm having to put up a fairly significant effort to get from wherever I am in the line to the front this burns some matches. Um, what should I be doing here? Should I just be easing it into my turn a little bit more? Should I be further up throughout? Maybe I need to be getting up out of the saddle. I'm not really sure. If you have some advice, please leave me a message in the comments. I uh, would love to hear from you. Um, otherwise, uh, you can see through this effort uh, the signs of fatigue starting to show. Uh, my head's down, I'm mopping sweat left and right. Um, I'm struggling to hold the wattage through here. I mean, it is kind of a, an undulating um, section of, of the course. It's up and it's down. Um, but yeah, I'm really struggling to hold um, the power. You can see I'm sort of uh, spiking up and down. Only a few minutes up the road, the wheels start to come off. Uh, as we pull out of the tunnel, I start to fall off the back of the group with Dan from our team. I'm just really struggling at this point. I'm still recovering from my last turn, which 
was visibly a struggle for me. Trying to keep that power up over 300 is just too much right now. And off the back, uh, 300 is not even enough to get us back on. I have put the call out uh, of a discord to the team to saying, look, we're off the back. And can we ease it up a little bit for us to get back on? The team comply and, and we start to group up again. Dan obviously had a little bit of legs to push through and, and join the group. I rise at this point to get back onto the group, but it's hurting, right? Getting back on here is burning matches. Fortunately, we're able to regroup uh, and the team ease off, I think, for the next little while. At this point, I call that I'm, I'm going to have to skip my next turn. It's the only way that I'm going to be able to stick it out for much longer in this race. Another five minutes up the road, I'm off the back again. This is where I really start to think. Team time trial, you only need to get four people across the line. We have six in our team, which means that two can drop before we get to the end. Obviously, the more that you can carry throughout the race, the better, because it's the more power and the more pulling that you have in your group, even if people are not taking turns. But there does have to come a point where if the team keeps slowing to pick you up when you drop, then ultimately you're going to be slowing the team down. Fortunately in this situation, Todd drops back, uh, he helps ferry me back onto the group, which is really great. Really what you want to see out of a team lead. I managed to get back on, but at this point I'm not sure I've got too much more left in the tank. This is what would be my next turn. I have got a bit in the tank, but not a lot. Uh, I decide that I might have a go at a half turn, 30 seconds for this roll. I stand to try and filter through the group and get on the front. Uh, it turns out to be a little bit too much power and surges out on the group. I ended up way past the group and everyone having to bolt up their power to try and catch me. This is not ideal, but it is very much a, an indication of the way that I'm feeling at this point in the race. 20 kilometers in, 27 minutes down, I'm pretty cooked. Fortunately, we managed to regroup. The team are absolute professionals in this situation. We ease off a little bit as we come into the rise, into the volcano here. Allows everybody to just take a breath uh, and get our formation back in line. As I roll into the 25th kilometer, I'm struggling. I have been off the back a couple of times by this point and found my way back on. Uh, it's kind of reaches that point where you gotta make a decision. I think at this stage I'm, I am slowing the team down so I muster everything I've got into a last ditch 30 second turn on the front. It levels out the turns, gets them off the half minutes onto the four minutes and means they can roll proper easy to manage turns from here on out. From here on I really just need to let the team go. Uh, there's 10 kilometers left in the race they'll be much better without me from this point out. I am disappointed. I was hoping to be able to get through this whole race, but I have managed to get a lot further into it than what I did the last one. After catching my breath, I realized there is a small silver lining. Right as I fell off the back with the team, we managed to catch El Dooley here from AHDR. This gives me a partner for the, the rest of the race. After I dropped from the previous team trial, I kind of just fell out of the race. I sat up, I changed into kind of filmer mode and I tried to capture footage of the team as they rolled through the turns. What this meant was that I finished really weakly, I kind of just dawdled in into the last two kilometers. This was something that I really wanted to do differently this time. I wanted to, if I fell off the back, to finish the race as strong as I could. So having a partner here really meant I was able to do this. I did a lot of pulling in this partnership, but it was good to have someone to switch with from time to time. Although I didn't finish with the team, I did manage to finish reasonably strong. Tied our team captain, fell off the group towards the end of the race. It was a high tempo, uh, you know, the pressure was felt by all. Uh, that gave me a, another challenge after I dropped El Dooley off. I was able to try and chase down Todd and see if I could pip him at the post. As I roll into Fugo Flats, I challenge myself to lift for the finish. I muster all of the sprint I have left in me and lay it out for the line. Heart rate's now over 190. I'm in the red. 
As I said before, a little bit disappointed with the outcome here, uh, but acknowledge that it is better than the previous one. This is the final race in this season of Zwift Racing League, my first Zwift Racing League. I think I've gone fairly well. Uh, I look forward to doing another video where I can recap uh, my learnings. Big shout out to all Aero teams. Thanks for welcoming me in. Uh, thanks for riding with me. Uh, it's been a great learning experience that I've thoroughly enjoyed. So that's it. Until next time, see ya!